In this video, we will have a look at the Microsoft Azure load balancer, but there are also other load balancers Microsoft Azure supports. So, so let's have a brief look at what they all are before deep diving into the Azure load balancer itself. And the first one is the Azure load balancer, which is a regional based layer four load balancer I'll go through today. But within the GUI, when you've chosen the option to go with the Azure load balancer or however you configure your Azure environment, there is another type of load balancer called the cross regional load balancer. And this is like the layer four standard load balancer in the sense that it's a layer four load balancer, but it's also used for load balancing across multiple regions as well. But the mechanisms of how it works is quite different, however, as it uses any cast and entry points into the Azure Backbone Network. So I've grouped these two together as they are actually subtypes of the Azure Load Balancer. And then there is the Azure Traffic Manager, which is a global DNS-based load balancing solution. Load balancing traffic across multiple regions, but using DNS to do this. So it relies on DNS to do its load balancing. The next one is the Azure Application Gateway, which is a layer seven web traffic load balancer for load balancing web applications. And finally, there is the Azure front door, which is quite similar to the cross regional load balancer in terms of how it uses any cast and entry points. But it's a layer seven load balancer, so it's got lots of layer seven functionality built into it. And from the Azure web GUI interface, it can help you choose the correct load balancing solution for you. So by choosing the second option below, load balancing, help me choose, it will ask you a series of questions like if you're using HTTPS or not, and if you need to load balance across regions, and other questions before it helps you choose the correct load balancing solution for you. And the second image below shows the four different load balancing types and a summary for each of them. Now, just to set the scene, we've got this virtual machine and it starts to receive too many requests from the internet, or it could even be users from the on-premise office connecting to the cloud to this virtual machine. So what we do is we throw a couple more virtual machines into the mix to help with the amount of traffic to the web service and throw a load balancer in there as well to distribute the traffic. And this is the whole purpose of a load balancer, what it does. So it distributes the traffic to these three virtual machines. Now the one virtual machine is not overloaded as the connections are shared across the three different virtual machines. And the load balancer also has health probes to ensure the services are up and running and responding. And if one of them goes down, if one virtual machine goes down, it knows not to send it traffic and then checks to see when it's back up and running again to distribute the traffic to it again. So it knows when virtual machines go down and so it can distribute traffic accordingly, stop sending traffic to the one that's gone down and it can also monitor it for when it comes back up and running again. And this is all part of the health probe process. The Azure Load Balancer operates at layer four of the OSI model, supporting TCP and UDP traffic. There are also two subtype load balancers as well. One is the public or external load balancer, and the other is the internal or private load balancer. Now, the public load balancer is tied to a public facing IP address for requests coming from the public internet, which maps those requests from the public internet known as the front end IP pool to the private IP addresses, which are the services, also known as the back end pool within the Azure environment. And this can be virtual machines or application instances. And then there's the internal or private load balancer. Now the private load balancer is used to translate IP addresses to a group of virtual machines or instances in a virtual machine scale set. Internal load balancers are used to load balance traffic from internal Azure resources to other Azure resources inside the virtual network. And they can also be accessed from the on-premise network as well, where you have a hybrid deployment setup. So the public is used from accessibility from the public internet and the internal is used from within the internal network. This is a layer four load balancer for inbound and outbound traffic and recommended for non HTTP HTTPS traffic. So non web application specific traffic. And this is because it has limitations where it doesn't fully understand the web application layer, layer seven information on the web applications. And it can still be okay if you're using it for HTTP HTTPS traffic as well. If you just need the basic functionality, it's absolutely fine. But unless you're using the cross regional load balancer, which is a, a different subtype of the load balancer, this one works within a region only. 
so you cannot distribute traffic across different regions and it sports two different options for session persistence also known as session affinity or source ip affinity or even client ip affinity and this feature ensures the connections from the same client will go to the same backend instances within the backend pool this is sometimes needed so the initial connection that connects to the backend service within the pool is sometimes needed to go back to the same virtual machine that is handling the request one example is it remembers the authentication information authentication information requires three or four different connections before you're fully authenticated so you need to keep going back to the same virtual machine so that's what session affinity is used for and having a further look at session affinity options there is the tutable client ip which is as simple as it gets where the same source ip address keeps sending its traffic to the same instance and then there is the three tuple client ip in protocol where it's the same client ip and the same protocol like https and using the client ip and the protocol is needed sometimes and it resolves certain issues such as with the remote desktop gateway which needs to have the same source ip and protocol to work so this is where you would use the three tuple instead of the two tuple connection for source affinity options availability zone options so we have three different types there's the first type which is known as zonal services so resources are tied to a zone which provides resilience within the zone itself such as power cooling etc so here the load balancer inbound outbound traffic is over a single zone in a region so as long as the zone is healthy the load balancer will be healthy and the front end will respond to client requests and then there's the zone redundant services in here resources are replicated or distributed across zones automatically and depending on the region this is typically done across three different zones and the final one is non-regional services and non-regional services are resilient to zone-wide and region-wide failures offering the best level of resilience and here are the SKUs which is the standard SKU and a basic SKU and the features are listed here for both of them this is a screenshot I've captured from the Microsoft Azure website. You can see the standard SKU is much more powerful. For example, it sports 1,000 backend pools as compared to the basic SKU, which only sports 300. And Microsoft recommends the standard load balancer SKU and standalone VMs, availability sets, and virtual machine scale sets can only be connected to one SKU. And you cannot change the SKU from an existing resource. So you cannot go from basic to standard SKU. So just be mindful of those limitations. There's also a third SKU and it's known as a gateway SKU and this has been designed for high availability performance and high availability scenarios with third party network virtual appliances like firewalls, IPS systems, DDoS protection, advanced analytic systems and other appliances as well. And these are some of the benefits with the gateway SKU listed here but it needs a dedicated video of its own so we are only going to touch on it here. So the gateway SKU is a recommended option when you are using third party appliances and you are serious about your high availability scenarios and high performance scenarios as well.